Hey, it's Mark Podolsky, The Land Geek, with your favorite niche real estate website, www.thelandgeek.com. I'm super excited for today's guest. But before I talk to my guest, I'd be remiss if I didn't properly introduce my co host. You know him, you love him, Scott Todd from scotttodd.net, landmodo.com. If you're not automating your Craigslist and your Facebook postings, postingdomination.com forward slash The Land Geek. And learn about anything at InvestorNinjas.com. Scott Todd, how are you? Mark, I'm great. How are you? I'm not good because now there's two Scots on the podcast and I feel kind of ganged up. And guess what? Both Scots have like this virtual background thing going like in video. Not that anybody can see this, but like we're like the Scots are looking pretty cool. We're representing. You really are. And uh, I'll figure this out. I'll figure it out. Anyways. Um, while I am basking in my own video shame, I want to talk about Scott Smith from royallegalsolutions.com. If you don't know Scott Smith, he is, uh, the, oh, he's, you know, he opened up Royal Legal Solutions, but he's the, uh, he was an aggressive litigator who brought suits against major insurance companies and he knows firsthand tactics that plaintiff's attorneys use to win lawsuits. So now he's combining this knowledge when setting up business structures to protect your assets. And essentially, if you combined, let's say, F. Lee Bailey, if he was only interested in protecting assets, with, let's say, uh, Sam Zell, right? Some amazing real estate investor. That gives you Scott Smith from RoyalLegalSolutions.com. Scott, did I do a good job of explaining you? Mark, you, you know that you always do a great job, bud. You know, into it. I uh, I've been real. I've actually bought my first property uh, of real estate actually when I was in law school, and it was a transmission and auto repair shop. And then I actually bought. I was running the business and rehabbing the building and flipped it to graduate from law school without debt. And that's when I fell in love with real estate as a business. And I always thought I wanted to do litigation, and I was great at it, but I burned out on it. And um, when I went back into real estate investing. Um, I had to, I wanted to scale up for myself and then helping other people. And so I had to learn everything from the ground up when acquiring my first 10 properties and getting into commercial and getting into apartment complexes. I come to find out that a lot of investors were really good at finding the deals. They went to the gurus and learned how to find the deals. They didn't know any, much of anything about how to do all the other stuff around taxes and accounting and LLCs and bookkeeping and all the rest of it. And that's why I started Royal Legal Solutions. So I could take all the knowledge I had for, for myself, all the knowledge I had from working with thousands of investors across the country, pulling all that information together and then giving it to all the clients at Royal Legal of like, what are the most effective, most streamlined, most efficient ways uh, for us to operate as real estate investors? Interesting. I get this question a lot. Like, should I be an LLC, S Corp, C Corp? Are those the kind of things like when you first start your entity that you care most about or is it something different? Yeah. So I always look at it and say, I'm all about making money first, right? So number one way you make money is be able to find great deals. Number two, the thing, the second thing you got to do is you got to keep the money, right? So that, that means the, is keeping it from the government, which is got to optimize the tax strategy and you got to make sure you don't have losses, right? So some losses you, you can't help, right? Because that's just the nature of doing deals. You might make a bad deal, whatever, right? That's the name of the game. There's other losses that you can totally prevent, right? Um, so we buy like fire insurance, for example, because we don't want the risk of a fire on the property. Um, in my line of work, what we do is we say, well, we also don't want the risk of lawsuits, right? And we also don't want the risk of people knowing everything uh, that we own because that exposes us. The more information people have about us, the more of a target we have on our back and the more likely they're coming to after us if, if anything you know, pops up. So we first look to say, what are the tax optimized strategies? So let's make sure we're keeping keeping all of our money we can there. The second thing we do is to say, well, once we know that, how can we make an entity structure to hold all of these assets um, to protect us uh, so that if there's ever a lawsuit, we don't care because we're gonna lose little to nothing from that lawsuit and that's very possible to do. And then we look at it and say, how can I do this and then not be any extra work for me and not cost me an arm and a leg in terms of maintenance and ongoing operations. So there's time savings and cost savings that all go into taxes and it's this nexus that has to be put together, which is why I think 
so many real estate investors and probably people listening to this podcast are like, I know that I needed to do something, but I just didn't know what to do. And I didn't have anybody else out there to hold my hand to actually make it happen. Uh, and that's what Royal Legal Solutions is all about. Yeah, I, I can't tell you how angry I am right now in a sense that you weren't around for me 18 years ago when I first started because I really set up my entities the wrong way had to unwind a bunch of stuff. It cost me a lot of time, a lot of money. Uh, I will say that I built many roads in my town because of all the taxes I had to pay. I feel good about that. But, you know, my wife would tell you it'd be nice if Scott Smith could have saved you that money and maybe, you know, send the kids to Harvard, something like that. But look, I digress, Scott. I'm not mad at you, but I'm mad at you. Um, but someone who's probably not mad at you is Scott Todd. Scott, what are your thoughts? Well, I mean, I think, I, I think that uh, what Scott said was pretty, pretty, pretty funny because, Mark, how many times do we hear people when they're trying to get their businesses going that they're just like, well, I can't do anything until I get my LLC set up. Well, you don't even know that the LLC is the right structure for you. You don't even know, like – you don't know nothing, right? And I'm not saying that in a negative way. I'm just saying like, go, go do the business first. If you put it in your own name, you can change everything. It doesn't even require a lot of unwinding. Like do a, do a few deals, put them in your name. Guess what? You can transfer them with a quick claim deed over to your LLC or your S Corp or whatever it is, whatever structure. But first of all, you need to have somebody that's going to guide you. And, you know, a lot of people think like, oh, an LLC, I just need an LLC. Well, how do you know you don't need an S corp or how do you know you don't need to be incorporated? You, you don't know what you don't know. And so, you know, essentially don't, I guess what I'm saying is go do the deals first and then get someone on your team that says, Hey, here's a better way of structuring this thing. Here's what you should do. And then you can just transition over to it. It's not like you even have to unwind everything. Yeah. I, it's so true. It's so true, which, which kind of leads me, Scott Smith, to the next question. What is some of the worst advice you see or hear given in setting up business structures and asset protection? Yeah, so the worst advice uh, that I read and see most commonly, you're going to see this all over bigger pockets. I hear this from attorneys. I hear this from CPAs. I hear it from really seasoned investors, uh, which is, just get an insurance policy and everything's going to be fine. Don't worry about it. And this is why it's so bad. I had a friend of mine who lost over $3 million from a single lawsuit and he was very well insured because what he had done is he had all of his assets in his personal name, right? Had huge insurance policies and didn't realize that uh, the insurance policies will never protect you from certain types of claims. Any claim that's based upon a misunderstanding from an email, that's not covered by an insurance policy. Any claim that's associated with a contract that you enter into, never covered by an insurance policy. And when, because he had everything in his personal name it made him a perfect target because they were able to really easily see that he had $3 million in real estate. It's all part of the public record and exactly how much he owned. And it's all in one pot of money. So they knew if they attacked him, they get the whole pie of it, right? So it put him at a horrible position uh, for being able to defend himself from the lawsuit. Um, and it's, it's that type of uh, ideology that says uh, insurance, just don't worry about it, is where you end up with people that end up with catastrophic losses. And the, the, the real crime of it all is that you don't have to take on any of those extra risks by using an LLC structure. So what we do is we use a series LLC structure and we combine it with anonymity trusts because um, my experience has been by using that structure, we were able to stop lawsuits before they ever even get started. Because what the anonymity trusts do is they hide all the assets, they hide your ownership of the company so people don't know what you own. And when they don't think you own anything, it looks like you qualify for food stamps, the lawsuits just don't happen. If for any reason a lawsuit were to proceed, you have a series LLC structure, which allows you the ability to compartmentalize every single asset so that way, if you end up in a lawsuit, the most you're going to lose is a single asset. And when you're in that kind of a strength position, before the lawsuit even starts, you find yourself on the right side of the negotiating table holding a lot of the power. 
I, I love this because you know the cliche in real estate, now not necessarily in our niche, but in, in all the other asset classes, is it's not a matter of uh, when you're going to be sued. It's a, or, you know, not a matter of if you'll be sued, it's a matter of when. Um, I really butchered that cliche and I apologize. But you know what I mean. So Scott, like I have a question. So the, the deals that we do, okay, like I, I don't know, may, and maybe I'm just saying this from a naive standpoint, but I, I don't know that the deals that I do necessarily would quantify for this whole structure that you're talking about. Let, let me explain. So I'm buying land and my average, my average investment in this property is like $1,600. And so I deal with a lot of volume, right? You know, like I, I, I'll buy two, 300 properties a year or something like that. And then I'm, I'm basically selling these things. So if I were to put every single property that I buy into an LLC, well, first of all, I'm paying a lot of fees, you know, to, to the state to, to do that. And, you know, then, then I've got a lot of accounting issues that go along with that. I know I can roll them up, et cetera, whatever. But ultimately, you know, like in my type of a business where I'm not spending, you know, millions of dollars on one property or even, you know, hundreds of thousands of dollars on a property, does, does what you're saying even like support our model? Yeah, it does. And, and I'll tell you why. And so for, for you guys and for people that are buying single family homes, and once they get above two plus properties or two plus assets, um, it makes a lot of, it makes, it doesn't make any sense at all to use individual LLCs. Because individual LLCs, you have to have separate accounting books, separate bank accounts, uh, separate yearly filing, separate filing fees, all this maintenance that goes into it and say, who the heck, if, if asset protection is that expensive and that time consuming, I'm just not going to do it right? And that's where a lot of people have stopped and said, I really, it's too hard to figure out. And it's too expensive. So I don't want to do it. That's why the advent of the series LLC, which came into existence a little over 20 years ago is the ideal solution, right? With a series LLC structure, I have one EIN number. I have one filing with the state. It's one entity that gets created and it's a parent entity. If you want to think of it like that. Now this parent entity can create an unlimited number of what we call child series, right? So you'll have the parent underneath it, you have child series A, child series B, child series C, whatever, right? Uh, we form these up in Texas because Texas doesn't have any yearly fees associated with it. And in Texas, it's free to create each child series. And each child series is just like an LLC for liability purposes. So with one series LLC, with one filing, you can create an infinite number of LLCs for free and they have no yearly costs and no yearly reporting requirements. So what you're able to do at that point is then for free, tuck each individual piece of property into its own uh, child series. So that way, if there's ever a lawsuit against one property, somebody has a catastrophic injury because you know there's toxic waste in your property and you didn't know about it, or there's like a sinkhole and somebody gets, an injury on and your insurance decides that, hey, this is a really bad injury and we're not gonna cover it. You're that asset then becomes compartmentalized. The best part is it didn't cost you anything to compartmentalize it. Uh, that's a kind of a drop the mic solution, Scott Todd. Um, the only, my only thing that I wanted to poke a hole in is what happens when we sell the asset out of the child LLC? Yeah, you just sell it directly out of the child LLC. So what we'll do, right? Because we said, well, even if we hold the asset inside of the child LLC, people could know then how many children we have, right? Because it has to be labeled child series A, child series B, et cetera. And I don't like that because I don't want even people to know how big the pie is, right? So what I'll do for all of my properties is I'll take the property, say, located at 123 Main Street. And this is for land. It's just like it is for a single family home. And I'll take that property at 123 Main Street and I deed it into a land trust called the 123 Main Street Trust, right? Now the 123 Main Street Trust is in turn owned by Child Series A. Child Series A is in turn owned by the parent. And the same thing is gonna happen with property B that comes across, you know, 456 Prosperity Way goes into 456 Prosperity Way Trust. 456 Prosperity Way Trust is owned by Child Series B. Child Series B is in turn owned by the parent. What this allows us to do is something um, that's even exponentially cooler than just the series compartmentalization. Because now I have anonymity in the actual titling of the asset itself. And anything that relates back to who created these entities goes back to a law firm. And all that information is then protected by the attorney client privilege. 
And because it's a trust that owns the asset, I don't have to do any foreign entity registrations in any states that I want to operate in. So I can have one Texas series LLC that I created because there's no annual fees and it has great charging order protection. It's among the, the strongest in the country because of that. I can own property anywhere in the country through a trust structure that's in turn protected by my series LLC and I have no foreign entity registration requirements, no foreign reporting requirements. Um, no ongoing maintenance of all these different entities besides just my one parent entity. And when I want to sell it, I just sell it directly out of the trust. Huh. Okay. Scott Todd. <laughs> oh, 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 oh. This, this is, this is, a, this is not, I'm not, I'm not saying this facetiously and, and I, I don't mean to come off being arrogant, but what I really w humbly want to say is that I've been doing this a long time, 18 years, and I've talked to a number of asset protection specialists. Why am I just now hearing about this, Scott Smith? So the series LLC has only been around for about 20 years. So in legal terms, that's relatively new, right? Um, LLCs okay. have only been around, or been around for about 60 plus. Um, so with the series LLCs, um, as well as that they're really only, I think, exceptionally useful for real estate investors. So if it was an attorney who was also a real estate investor, who also looked into how to use trust structures and optimizing around all this, you're just not going to find people that are like me, that this is all they think about and all they do day in and day out, probably. Right. Um, the only other criticism that I hear about series LLCs, which has some practitioners saying, hey, well, we're not going to recommend that for our clients and we want them to do individual LLCs, even though the cost is, is crazy high, as they say something around saying, well, there's no case law. So because there's no case law, we're not 100% sure how these things are going to play out. And I call, I call shenanigans on that argument for a couple of reasons. But the main reason I call shenanigans on it is because it's been around for so long and that nobody's tried to challenge it. That should tell us something about the relative strength of it, number one. Number two, the law isn't what case law is. The law is actually what's written by in the statutes and passed by the legislature and the laws on series LLCs are extremely clear with what the protections they bring on, which is why nobody's challenging it. Because the only thing you could challenge is say, hey, the laws here aren't clear, the laws are clear. So there ain't nothing there to challenge. So you're never gonna find case law uh, much on these series LLCs to be able for everybody to be like, hey, we got thousands of cases on this because there's nothing there. You also see more and more states adopting the uh, laws to allow creation of series LLCs in their more states. So the overwhelming thrust among the country is series LLCs will be the new thing. The great thing that's about US law is that you can form an LLC in one state just like a series LLC, and you can use it in any state, right? It's called the full faith and credit of the constitution. It's the same reason that people form Delaware LLCs and use them everywhere throughout the country. We're using the same analogy to say, hey, series LLCs are LLCs with a caveat. We can form them here in Texas where the laws are great for us. They're very advantageous and it's cheap to do it. And we're gonna use that anywhere else. And we have a huge amount of case law that supports that as the analogous Delaware LLC structure. So I think you'll see, begin to see it over time, but honestly, I just don't think there's that many people that are attorneys that are longtime real estate investors that only focus on these types of issues. Scott Todd. All right, so you, you mentioned, and there's a lot to unpack what you said, but like you mentioned like the, the series LLCs, I'm, I'm on board with it, I'm ready to get going. But then second, you mentioned the, the, the trust, right? So is there legal documents that I have to form like with every single trust? Like, do I, I like, I like you, Scott, but I don't want to go back to you every time I got to form one of these things because like one legal fees and two like time, right? Like I'm buying properties all the time. I want to be able to like to just to come throw it together. Like, is that the way it works or do I got to run back to you every time I need one of these? So I'm going to give you a hot secret about how to work with attorneys on a budget. Okay. Here's the hot secret. The hot secret is that attorneys, even ones that are super specialized like me, right? We all have uh, our own intellectual property is what our years of experience working with all of our clients get channeled into documents. 
That now becomes a piece of IP that we use. And it's essentially the same piece of IP with minor tweaks for any individual client. So the value of a great attorney is their documents, right? And knowing how the documents have to be used. After you get the, after your first set of documents are done with us, you'll actually see, here's how these documents work with my business structure and you have all of the IP. And at that point, you're able to duplicate it all on your own at no cost. And the great part about trust, just like with the child series documents, there's no filing for them and they're all private. So you can literally recreate these on your own desktop once you get the formula down. So I would say use us for the first couple. And if you want to take it over after yourself after that, you know, more power to you. I'm, I'm not in the business of trying to nickel and dime dollars on the way to the road to success. I'm in the business of empowering people to be able to do their own work for the people that want to. And for everybody else that doesn't want to, we say, great, well, we'll do it for you. Because, you know, it's, it's up to each individual to decide what level of commitment they want to have for the things on their own plate to do. So, Scott, that's the way I would do it for, for okay. working with me or with anybody else. All right. So then my, my last question is that, like, for me, I, I'm based in Florida, right? So my company, my LLC is based in Florida. And so if I go do this series LLC in Texas, that means I now have a, a Texas LLC. Can my primary LLC today be the, the owner of that? Um, or like, for, for, and the only reason I'm asking is like my bank, okay? My bank is not, doesn't do, uh, doesn't, doesn't work in Texas. And so essentially, like I would have to have some registration in Florida for them to be bankable on a Texas LLC, is that, if that makes sense. And so that's my question is how much of my business do I have to unwind here in order to make this happen? I'm glad you brought that up um, because when we get into the specifics of what somebody needs to do with their particular business structure, it actually gets into how do they operate? How are they acquiring the properties? How are they getting financing in? So this is where we typically will sit everybody down for an hour long uh, roadmap consultation to say, come in, let's sit down and let's unpack all of these to say like, here's your specific plan of what you need to put in place, like both now and what you should look to scale into. Um, Cause this is where you start to get into a lot of variables. The, the nuts and bolts of how the taxes work, what are the essence of the foundations of the structures um, that we use? Those are gonna be the same for every single client. But every client also has a different way they wanna run their business, right? And that's why we have a consultation to say, okay, well, we're gonna figure out exactly what's gonna be the most efficient banking structure, financing structure, et cetera, to go with that. I'll tell you along with that, Scott, is another hot tip that we use is that we'll actually use a two company structure. I'm gonna give away a couple of secrets here on this podcast of what we do. So people that don't pay for the consultation can even get some of the benefit. So what we'll typically always do is a two company structure. You have one company that um, sits like on your left hand side and that's your asset holding company. It's your anonymous series LLC that doesn't do business with anybody else in the world. It's only gonna hold the assets, right? And we don't want it to have talk to anybody, touch anybody, do anything with anybody. Uh, because the moment it does, now it starts to incur liability and we want to keep that as liability free as possible. What we have on our right hand is we call it an operating company that has no assets by design. And merely what it does is, is it signs all of our emails. It's going to sign any contracts that we get into. It's going to otherwise be our face to the world. Some people call it a bad word, like a shell company, but there's nothing wrong with an, a company that just doesn't have any assets. And that's essentially what that is. So that's typically the way that we're breaking it down is we want all of our operations going through a company that's not us, a separate company that holds all of the liability, a completely separate company that holds all of the assets. And where the wrinkles come in is exactly, um, Scott Todd, like what you're talking about, which is, well, how do I need to acquire it? How does my banking have to work? If I'm getting financing, how do I have to finance it and then move it into the asset holding company? Um, and those are all the pieces that we unpack during the consultation to be able to give you the roadmap of like, here's how all it works. And, but I can tell you that from doing this a few thousand times, there's never been an investor that's not in a better position after we're able to show them like, here's what the very best people do in your industry that are looking to get this type of operational setup and these foundations for growth. I love it. I, I, I love it. And um, I, I'm the only thing I'm thinking of right now, Scott Smith, is that gif of Homer Simpson saying, take my money. <laughs> uh, honestly, I mean, it's like, as soon as we end this podcast, like I'm signing up because it solves what is essentially 
a big problem that we have because we're doing lot we're doing lots of volume, but there's small deals. So any one deal, it would just be easier for, easier for us just to refund. Like I've never been sued because if anyone's unhappy with their land, well, here's a refund. We're not going to fight. You know what I mean? So, but, but why not, if it doesn't cost anything, not that I'm going to fight anybody, I still would keep that happy customer's guaranteed policy. But if I had somebody, let's say, drive up on my property, they break their arm and they sue me, something like that. That's still out there. And that's covered by an umbrella policy on my homeowner's insurance. Maybe. But just maybe. And so it's a kludgy sort of risky setup that we have because of what Scott said, because we have, we need speed and it's cost prohibitive to, you know, take a $5,000 asset, create a separate LLC for it. We just couldn't do it. So this really solves every single liability pain point in our business. Then the, the next natural question is, are we going to still see the same tax benefits that we would in any LLC structure? Yeah, you will. Um, and the reason why is because the way that uh, the series LLC is set up with the parent and the child all have the same ownership, right? They're all Mark's entity, so to speak, right? For his asset holding company. So for tax purposes, all treated as a disregarded entity. And you can make the election of the LLC with how you want it to be taxed. You could have it taxed as pass through. You could have it taxed as an S corporation. You're able to make these elections with IRS. So there's no tax drawbacks at all from it. So you, your CPA has all the flexibility to do um, whatever they need to. And the added benefit to it with using a series structure is that you can operate all of your asset holding out of one bank account and one set of accounting books, as long as you just tag any income and expenses to each individual property. Now that might not be a big deal for land because there's probably not a lot of income and expenses with land flipping, but for single family home investors, that becomes a big issue that you say, okay, well now I get to pull all of my assets into one bank account that really simplifies, you know, out how many bank accounts I have to manage, right? Because it can get really unwieldy if you're doing multiple LLCs. Um, and so you're able to see that the, the uh, reporting all goes up through one EIN number. So now you only have one tax reporting for all of your assets. And, and just to underline it here in case anybody was wondering too, once you have the series LLC structure and you have all of your planned assets separated with the individual anonymity trust and the child series, move everything over. The really wealthy people that I work with don't own anything. Wealthy people don't own stuff. Their asset holding companies own stuff. So your stocks, anything, your extra cash, you know, that you're, you, that's above and beyond what you're living on. Everything should be inside of your series LLC to make sure it's protected. Because at the end of the day, what you want to be able to do is get into a horrible car accident and think, well, if I'm sued because of this, I don't care because they can sue me all day long and they're not going to get to any of my stuff. And that's the way the, the wealthy people operate and the, well, and the way that we're all able to operate now with the advent of a series LLC structure. Yeah. If you saw that show uh, Trust with Jay Paul Getty in the very first episode, he walks his nephew through the structure where he essentially owns nothing and therefore pays no taxes, even though he's at that point in time, the wealthiest man in the world. It's exactly what you said. Um, Scott Todd, am I, am I too giddy about this? I feel no, like I need to. No, you, Mark, to you don't understand. Like this is the first time I want the podcast to end so that like I can whip out my credit card and start throwing it at somebody like, like, no, I'm giddy too, man. Like where do I sign? What? Yeah. What I got to I mean, do? I feel like we have like this. Era. I got to fly to Texas today, man. I'm uh, wherever Scott is, man. I'm going like, we got to go. Yeah. The, the this, best part this is, is you don't even have to come to Texas. We, I, I very rarely even meet anybody. In no, person I want to come and give you a hug, brother. Oh, <laughs> dude, I'll take hugs any day of the week. Bring it on. Yeah. No, like <laughs> Mark, you know, I can think of, remember we have a, uh, we have a, have a coaching student who actually was selling some land and uh, the guy showed up to his house with a briefcase of money. Yeah. Right. Rogers, like, that's yeah. how I feel right now. I just want to get the briefcase and show up to Scott's house. Like nothing creepy there. Just like here, what do we got to do? <laughs> it's, start, it's starting to get, I have to say it's starting to get creepy, Scott Todd, but Scott's <laughs> like, my, my, like, I'm, I'm excited. We got to end it. Yeah. Yeah. Like, I, like we're so excited. What are you that doing? We're, your pants. 
What's going on right now? <laughs> I mean, it's crazy. No, so, no, nobody can see. It's on video. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Um, you, the, the, the mentorship this podcast has been invaluable. I, I do have to ask you because it's just our typical Art of Passive Income podcast thing. Do you have another resource, tip, website, anything to help our Art of Passive Income investors? Oh, yeah. The businesses oh, improve their lives? I have, a, I have a ton of stuff. I actually, one of the best things um, that I love right now that we put together is actually have a text in. So for anybody that texts in Royal, R-O-Y-A-L, to 474747, we send them all a link to here's the top 10 things you need to know to protect your assets. And it has my top 10 strategies. This work that we did here was only a few out of the 10 that I consider to be like the highest value strategies you could use to protect yourself. I'm talking about other stuff that's in there like equity stripping and all kinds of like, how do you move offshore efficiently if that's something that you see uh, coming down the pipe? Um, for you. And um, it's so all you have to do is text in Royal, R O Y L, to 474747. We'll send you that link. Um, we're never going to text you on that um, with after you send us that, un unless we have a free uh, giveaway of something that we would normally charge over $250 for. From time to time, we'll have special promotions that will come in and we'll text out to everybody say, hey, you guys got 48 hours to take advantage of a special promotion, but I guarantee you it's gonna be amazing stuff only because listen, I hate getting text messages unless they're amazing, right? Um, and so that's what we're committed to. All right, so I'm texting you right now. It's, it's 4747? Four seven four seven four seven, and you just text Royal to four seven four seven four seven. And then I'm gonna text Royal. Yeah. All it's right. Royal over to four seven, four I, seven. I just want to get this before Scott does. Well, I'm having a problem with the texting, man. Like it's not Scott's fault, but what happened was the, the service that that Scott's using. I had someone go rogue on me from that service, and so I put stop on there. And now I'm afraid it's not going to let me in. So you may have won, won the battle there, Mark. If, if anybody uh -oh. has a trouble with that, just email me directly at scott at Royal Legal Solutions. And I'll hit you up with that the top 10 uh, book. And I'll hit you up with some other resources that we have on like how to save money on taxes using solo 401ks and some other stuff. I'm doing and it. Scott Todd, besides, you know, your tip of adopting Scott Smith, what <laughs> do you have a tip of the week? I, I do have a tip of the week, but it, I mean, it's kind of lame if you ask me, but well, I mean, like, how do you, how do you beat this tip, Mark? Like, you I, really I don't can't. know. Okay. So check this out. This is, um, this is a cool little thing. You know how you get emails and it's like, people are asking questions like, what about this? What about that? What about this? What about this? You're like, it's like, oh man. So then what do you do? You copy and paste what they say up, you copy, you paste it up into your reply and then you like have to space it out, whatever. Right. Check this out. It's it's a it's a Chrome plugin though. It's reply.ninja, reply.ninja. And when you install it, what happens is you can choose in their email like what you want, like you just copy it or you just highlight it, right? And then you hit the little button that says like um, copy it and it moves it to the top for you. And then you can just hit your reply. There's no more pasting, whatever. You can just you can just grab pieces of it. And it's inline replying. It's really, really cool. I don't understand how is this different than, than Gmail's auto sort of AI to reply. No, because it may not know what you want to reply to. The, the, the uh, Google or the, uh, yeah, the Google one, the Gmail one, may not know what you're trying to reply to. This one, you just highlight what you want to reply to, like the, the piece that you want to answer the question for. Because like, think about it. Someone asks you 10 questions or three questions. Well, what do you do? You you have to go in there and copy and paste those three questions up to the top, hit enter a few times, answer their questions. This is like, you just highlight the first question, hit the button, it moves it to the top, you hit your reply, you go back into their email, boom, you do it again, hit their reply. It's in line replying so that you're not having to like bounce all over the email that you're trying to compose. It's working very efficiently and smartly. All right, done and done, I just did it. All right. Thanks for that. All right, my tip of the week is join us in our, ex our irrational exuberance about Scott <laughs> Smith and, and how he's going to protect us. And because um, literally he's the only one that we've talked to that has a practical, viable, affordable solution for our needs. And that is at royallegalsolutions.com. 
we will have a link to that, but um, fantastic. Um, Scott Smith, are we good? Yeah, I think we're good, man. I think that's, uh, I probably got everybody's head exploding. And anybody listening to this, don't feel bad if you have to listen to this a few times. It's pretty typical uh, to go into it. But if uh, for everybody that, that wants a little hand-holding with what goes on with that, the best next step is to go to royallegalsolutions.com, look at all the information that we have. And if this looks like something you're interested in, we charge $149 for a con roadmap consultation that walks you through everything. We give away all the secrets, all the information. You can take that info and do whatever you want with it. Put it together yourself, hire another attorney. You know, to us, it's all the same because we're just about helping people. If you want to hire us to do it, that's great as well too. But the roadmap consultation for $149 gives you the exact game plan for you, your business, where you're at now and where you're growing. Amazing. All right. Well, Scott Smith, thank you so much. Uh, Scott Todd, are we good? We're good, Mark. I want to thank the listeners. I want to apologize if your head did explode, but hopefully it didn't. And if it didn't and you got as much value as Scott, Todd, and I did, do us these three little favors. Subscribe, rate, review the podcast. Send us a screenshot of that review to support at thelandgeek.com. We're going to send you for free our $97 passive income launch kit. So please do that. And... Um, you know, we really appreciate it and, and, and share it on the interwebs. Scott Todd, are you ready? I, I, we got to hurry up because I, I got to get to this consultation. One, two, three, right. let, let freedom ring. ring. And Scott Smith, you, you'll just, whatever Scott now communicates with you, just reply to him via Reply Ninja. Um, waiting on Mark, <laughs> and scheduling him first, and then no. I'll get to you. <laughs> no. No, yeah, no, I come doubt. no doubt. <laughs> we have the same name. We have cool back backgrounds. You, you're out. Dude. I'm, I'm calling Zoom right now. All right. Thanks, guys. Thank yeah. you. Okay.